Hello everyone, this is John with ziptopia.org. Welcome to the Oracle slash ACME packet session border controller simplified configuration series part two. In this tutorial, we will first get a little familiar with the command line interface and then look at layer one to layer three configuration items according to the seven layer OSI model. As we just mentioned, the first section will be command line interface tips slash tricks where we simply discuss certain tips and tricks that will help simplify the SPC configuration. Next, we will jump into the physical and data layer configuration and wrap up the tutorial with the network layer configuration. So these are just a few tips and tricks that will make your life easier when you are working on an SPC. The first one is question mark. So when you hit question mark at any level, the SPC will give you the list of commands available at that level. When you change to another level and hit question mark, it now lists the available commands at that level. Please note that tab does a similar function, but lists them in a different way. As you can see, with a question mark, you get the description of the command as well. Number two, Cisco iOS experience helps. Cisco is a commonly used vendor in different products. And if you are familiar with the Cisco iOS command line, you will not have any issues with the ACME packet SPCs. There are so many similarities. For example, in order to see the current running configuration, you type show run. Obviously, we haven't configured anything as a part of the series, so nothing comes up here. Uh, config T is a very commonly used Cisco iOS command. As you can see, when you type config T, you get under the configure uh, level. Uh, hit question mark, see the next available, for example, media manager. You hit, it takes you to the next level at the media manager. So just like Cisco, you can use exit to get out of the uh, levels. And when you are done, the save command is the same, but the slight difference here is instead of copy, run, start, uh, you just type act for activate config. Now, if you haven't already noticed, there's one thing that is kind of annoying. The commands are not in alphabetical order. So when you are looking at a list of commands, pay attention because the command you are looking for might not be where you think it is. To be precise, most of the commands are actually in alphabetical order. However, when you go to different levels, you'll see the difference in the order uh, much easily. So for example, under configure, let's go to media manager, hit question mark, boom. You can easily tell that the alphabetical order is out the window. Now let's move on to an interesting difference between Cisco IOS and ACME packet SPC configurations. The command select. Select is one of those commands that really give people a hard time. When you are configuring a section, if you see an error that says no object selected, that means you forgot to use the command select. Now, I'm not going to give you the documentation-like details about the command select, but I'm going to give you the uh, tip that I give to everyone who is struggling with this command. So whatever you are configuring, whichever level you are at, if you hit question mark and take a look at the command list, if you see select in this list, you must use it. Otherwise, move on. Let's say we are trying to configure some ports, just like we are about to do in this 
tutorial. Let's go to configure terminal. Again hit the question mark. The select is not an option here, so we are in good shape. Let's move on to system level, which the network interface and physical interface would be at. Hit the question mark. The select command is still not a part of this list. We are still in good shape. Let's move to network interface. Let's say we are about to configure a network interface. If you don't have any network interface configured, that's fine. You are lucky. You can omit uh, select this time. But when you have multiple interfaces, you will have to use select. As you can see, it's a part of this level. Again, the thing to keep in mind is if you are having any issues with the select command, try to keep in mind that when you look at the command list, if select is there, you have to use it. Another important command is done. So when I'm talking to someone about SPC configuration, I always use this phrase. Are you done? Are you done configuring? So when somebody's stuck, they made their changes, they don't know what to do next, I tell them, hey, are you done? Are you done configuring? If you keep these questions in mind, you will always remember the command done. And that's what you need to use in order to finish configuring an item. Next section is physical slash data link layers. This is just a quick reminder of the 7 layer OSI model and how it applies to SPC configuration. For more details, please watch part 1 of this series. We talked about console access in part 1. We also mentioned the fact that management 0 port can be used for out of band management whereas management 1 and management 2 can be used to synchronize SPCs in a redundant pair. Neither out-of-band communication nor a redundant pair is a requirement. Therefore, in order to simplify the configuration, we will skip the management ports for now. Our focus will be the network media ports where the magic happens. Let's take a closer look. As you can see here, the ports are named S0P0, S0P1, S1P0 and S1P1. S here stands for slot and P stands for port. Newer models like 4600s simply have P0, P1, P2, P3 names for these ports. Now these are called network media ports. When you hear the name network media port, you may think that these ports are just used for media. These ports are actually used for both processing signaling and media. How do they do it? Let's repeat the analogy we used in part 1. Let's say you are managing a room with four doors. Visualize it. Each door has a label on it. S0, P0, S0, P1, S1, P0, and S1, P1. People knock on the doors to come into the room, talk to you, and get out. Today, First person came through door S1P1, talked to you and you let him or her out the door S0P0. Just an example as you are managing the room, you determine who comes in through which door and which door they should use to get out. You have the complete control. Another person came through S1P1, talked to you and this time you let them out through door S0P1. You make the call, whatever door you choose. Here you chose S0P1. Someone else knocked on the door S0P0. You didn't recognize the person and you simply didn't let them come in. Another person knocked on the same door S0P0. But this time you recognize the person, you let them in. After talking to you, you let them go out through S1P1. Again, all under your control. Four doors, one room, you decide who comes in, who goes out, 
via which door. And that is pretty much what an SPC does. Let's use the scenarios in this analogy to explain the logic in SPCs. Instead of doors being labeled S0P0, S0P1, S1P0, S1P1, we have ports with the same labels in the SPC. Rather than people knocking on the doors trying to get in, SIP calls are trying to get into the SPC ports. Now, instead of you deciding if you want to let people in, the SPC you configured determines which calls should be accepted, which should be denied. Going over the examples in the analogy, let's say the SPC received a call to port S1P1. Is the caller or the source IP address familiar? Do we want the SPC to accept the call or deny it? Let's say S1P1 is connected to our internal network. Therefore, this call is now an outbound call from an internal user. Let's say you have two different SIP trunk providers connected to your SPC via ports S0P0 and S0P1. Depending on how you configure the SPC, this internal outbound call could use any of these ports slash SIP trunks. In the examples, the first call was sent out through one SIP trunk provider via port S0P0 and the next call through the other SIP trunk provider via S0P1. Now, let's say the SIP trunks via port S0P0 are two-way. We received a call and the SPC didn't recognize the source IP address of the sender. Then the SPC discards that call. If another call comes through port S0P0 via a known or pre-configured SIP trunk provider SPC IP address, SPC lets the call in and sends it to the internal network via S1P1. And finally, before we start configuring the SPC physical interfaces, we need to write down the virtual MAC addresses to use. To keep it simple, start with 00, 08, 25, 04, E8 and EE for S0P0. Change the last two digits to EF for S0P1, FE for S1P0 and FF for S1P1. That's all we need. Let's configure our physical interfaces. All right. As you can see, we don't have any configurations in the SPC yet. So let's go ahead and configure our physical interfaces. We go to config terminal under system and literally the section called physical interface is select a part of this list. Yes. Then rule of thumb, we use select first, even though we don't have any entries yet. Now we can move on to configuring our first interface. Since these ports are network media ports, the operation type is media. We give them a name. In this case, if you want to keep it simple, for S0P0, just name it S0P0. We already discussed the virtual MAC addresses to use in the previous slide. So apply the same principle. Use the name S0P1 for port 1 slot 0 and the respective virtual MAC address. The good thing about this is that similar to Cisco IOS, you can simply copy paste these lines. So. Here, let's go ahead and copy our first physical interface. Now, going back to the previous slide, think about the two questions I always ask people when they struggle. Are you done? Are you done configuring? Yes, we are done. So let's type done and hit enter. Now, let's do another select. We can see the configuration we just put in place. Hit enter to move forward, copy the configuration, paste it, type done, boom. Now you have the second 
physical interface configured. Do the same. Copy this, paste it, and now you have your next physical interface configured. And finally, the last physical interface. Copy, paste, done. And obviously, when you are done, don't forget to save and activate your configuration. Now, if you run the command show run, you will see the physical interfaces that we just configured. Well, after the physical interfaces, we now start configuring the network interfaces. Just like going from layer 1 to layer 3 in 7 layer OSI model. And we literally just need IP addresses, default gateways and subnet masks for this section. If you are using different SIP trunk providers or dedicated certain ports to certain applications, you work with the respective parties to get the IP address details and they would be in different subnets. This set of IP addresses we are going to use here is just to demonstrate the SPC configuration and they all belong to the same private network. Let's jump into it. Just like a lot of private networks out there, this private network that the SPC resides in is a slash 24 subnet with the default gateway dot one in the 192.168.1 uh, private IP space. Let's use 110 for S0P0, 120 for S0P1, 134 S0P0 and 140 for S1P1. As you can see, in order to keep things simple, we are again using the name as the respective slot and port. And we can copy paste these lines just like Cisco IOS. So let's go ahead and start under system instead of physical interface. Now we type network interface is select a part of this list. Yes. So it's worth typing select even though we don't have any entries at this point. Hit the question mark to see the command list. There's a lot of commands here, but as you can see on the left, we are just going to use four lines. We already select. So let's go ahead and add our first network interface. Similarly, let's copy the second one. Use select. Right click, done. Again, another copy paste. Starts with select, hit enter, enter, and right click, done. The last one, don't forget to use select after you use done. And now you can right click and the question that we always ask the folks who are done with configuring are you done are you done configuring if the answer is yes you type done now let's go back and make sure we save and activate these changes so now if you do show run you can see that we have our physical as well as network interfaces. In this tutorial, we briefly discussed Oracle ACMA Packet Session Border Controller command line interface and configured layer 1 to layer 3 configuration items according to the 7 layer OSI model. If you have any questions or comments about this tutorial, please let us know. Thank you.